This is a tutorial for the Consolidation Lab of the Geotechnical Engineering course CIV E3208. The purpose of this lab is to determine the time dependent settlement characteristics of a soil sample. Settlement occurs when a soil sample is subjected to a change in stress. This change can be the result of a change in applied load, for example, through a new construction over top, or a change in pore water pressure, such as when the groundwater table changes. For this experiment, we will be using a fixed ring consolidometer. This device will allow us to apply a variable load to a confined soil sample and record the deformation on a computer. Before you can begin testing, you will need to prepare the consolidation cell with the soil sample. The consolidation cell consists of several parts, as you can see here. This is the outer casing for the cell. This ring will surround our soil sample. It has a sharp edge on one side and a flat edge on the other. The top and bottom of the soil will be confined by two porous stones. The bottom porous stone has a ring around it, whereas the top one is plain. This is the end cap onto which the load is applied. Before you begin, record the mass of the ring. Now obtain a sample of clay. This core sample was obtained from the field through site investigation. Place the ring sharp edge down on a flat surface of the clay and push downwards. The sharp edge will cut out a cylinder of soil without deforming it. Make sure to push down enough so that the soil sample completely fills the inside of the ring. Using a knife or other cutting tool, remove the clay around the outside of the ring. Keep trimming until the outside of the ring is clean. Cut off the excess soil from the top and bottom of the ring, making it flat. This is what the sample should look like before you begin the test. You will need to find the moisture content of the sample before consolidation. To do this, take a labeled moisture container and record its mass. Take a small sample of the excess soil, place it in the container and record the mass of the container plus moist soil. Place the sample in an oven for 24 hours to dry. Finally, record the mass of the ring plus soil. Now that you have acquired a soil sample, you can put together the consolidation cell. Fill the shell of the consolidation cell in the following order. First place the porous stone with a ring around it onto the base. It should fit snugly within the groove at the bottom. Next place the soil sample flat side down in the middle of the porous stone. Now place the top porous stone onto the sample with the indentation facing up. Make sure that the top porous stone sits only on the clay and not on the brass ring. There is about one millimeter of clearance for this. This is to make sure that the load is applied only on the clay and not on the brass ring. Place the top cap onto the porous stone like this. A notch in the bottom of the top cap will fit closely into the indentation at the top of the porous stone. Finally, thread the confinement ring onto the three protruding screws along the outside of the cell. Push it down and secure it with three nuts like this. This consolidation cell is now ready for testing. Place the cell onto the consolidometer at the center of the groove marked on the base. This is so that the applied load will act directly on the cell's top cap. Fill the cell with water. This is to saturate both porous stones. Next, lower the rounded tip of the consolidometer into the indentation on the test cell by turning this knob. Alternately, the base the cell rests on can be raised or lowered by moving this lever, which acts to balance the consolidometer. The lever can be fixed in place by tightening a knob at the end. The goal here is for the tip of the consolidometer to rest in the indentation at the top of the test cell without any load being applied. To measure strain or displacement, we are using this electronic strain gauge. Connect the strain gauge to the computer. At the same time, add the initial load, in our case one kilogram, to this end of the consolidometer and start the recording. The software will record displacement as you can see here at periodic intervals and save them to a file along with the initial displacement when the test was started. For our experiment we will be gathering the results from the first 14 such intervals. This will take 24 hours. Once the 24 hours have passed, the test at this load level is complete. Simultaneously reset data collection and increase the load on the consolidometer. The software will now start recording a new set of data for the new load. 
Repeat this for the load increments you intend to test. Each increment will take 24 hours to consolidate. Here you can see 2 kilograms, 4 kilograms, 8 kilograms, 16 kilograms, and 32 kilograms. Once you've completed the test at the highest load, which should be 64 kilograms, you can proceed to unloading. Simultaneously reset data collection and reduce the load on the consolidometer. As before, run the test at progressively decreasing loads to get data for soil unloading. When all tests have been run, remove all masses from the consolidometer as well as the consolidation cell. Take apart the cell by unscrewing the nuts, removing the top cap and taking off the porous stones. Record the mass of the soil sample plus the outer ring. Record the mass of a new moisture container and fill it with a sample of soil from inside the ring. Record the mass of the sample plus container and place them in an oven for 24 hours to dry. You can now calculate the coefficient of consolidation. We will be using the data from a load of 1 kg. There are two methods you can use to interpret the data to obtain the coefficient of consolidation. Cassegrain's logarithm time fitting method or Taylor's square root of time fitting method. Before you do this, retrieve the data from the computer for the one kilogram test. The gauge rating will be given as the drop in height from a start of zero. This needs to be converted to reflect the height of the sample. To do this for each reading, simply subtract the gauge reading from the height of the sample. This is the equation for using the Cassegrain method for finding the coefficient of consolidation. H sub dr is the average distance from the edge of the sample to the center over the consolidation period. Next, create a semi-log graph of the displacement gauge reading, or height, on the y-axis against the log of time in seconds on the x-axis. Plot the data points like this. Lowercase t sub 50 is the time that corresponds to a displacement drop of 50%. First find d0, d50 and d100. d0 corresponds to the initial height of the sample at a time of 0. d100 corresponds to the final height of the sample at the end of the test. d50 is the average of these two values. Interpolate to find t sub 50. Finally, calculate the coefficient of consolidation. This is the equation for the Taylor method for finding the coefficient of consolidation. Before we can graph the results, Calculate the square root of time at each interval. Plot the displacement gauge reading on the y-axis against the square root of time on the x-axis. Extend the slope of the line for the first reading down to the x-axis. This point is t sub a. Extend this point along the x-axis by a factor of 1.15. Connect this point to the data point at a time of 0. Locate the point at which this line intersects with your data. This point corresponds to t sub 90. Interpolate to find t sub 90 from the graph. And then calculate the coefficient of consolidation. To calculate the compression and recompression indices, create a semi-log graph with the void ratio E expressed linearly on the y-axis against the effective vertical consolidation stress in kilopascals expressed logarithmically on the x-axis. From the data at the end of each 24-hour loading cycle, determine the void ratio and consolidation stress. Plot the points like this. Each of these points corresponds to one load. Notice that the top loading line is split into two sections that share similar slope. The compression index is the slope of the line at higher load levels along the loading line. The recompression index is the slope of either the loading or unloading lines. Now that we have found the coefficient of consolidation, compression index, and recompression index, we have finished the consolidation lab.